Hello, and welcome to the Sunday Meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo. We divide our meditation into three parts, for those of you who are joining us for the first time. We begin with our higher self so that we right away shift ourselves up and feel that our true self is holding a beautiful cosmic and spiritual connection to our daily lives. So we ask our higher self to take a form for us. That way our consciousness can have some point of reference to it and we draw it into our body and we sit in meditation. When we've drawn it into our body, I will go OM so that you can push the button and sit in meditation for as long as you like. In the second part of the meditation, we imagine that we're reaching up into the cosmos and we pull down a beautiful beam of pure white light down through the top of our head, down into our stomach, our solar plexus. This is the center of our emotional body. And from there, we laser that light out across the planet so that we're illuminating our planet and back up into the cosmos. And so we do this with our breath. We breathe in, we draw the light down, we exhale, we send it out and back into the cosmos. As you do that, you will find that it slows down your brain and brings you into a beautiful state of meditation. Another And then the third part of our meditation, each week people suggest a way that we can focus our meditative state in a way that serves the world. This week we've had several um, people saying, we have problems with the earth and the sky. The earth is trembling and the sky is releasing so much water that millions of people, either because of the earth or because of the sky, have become homeless. And so the third part of our meditation today will be about imagining a balancing so that, yes, we allow the rain to rain, but let's have it rain where it's needed and let us calm the earth, the friction in, in the earth so that we don't have these massive earthquakes. We have the right to reach into our earth and our sky and, and, and imagine that we are creating a balance. It makes a difference. And so if you're ready, we'll begin first by just breathing in through our nose and exhaling through our mouth because exhalation through your mouth uh, lowers your brain pulse so that it brings you into meditation. Ready? Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold at the top for a second and now as if you were whistling, slowly exhale. Exhaling through your mouth. And once more, breathe in through your nose. Hold at the top, and now exhale slowly through your mouth. Ask your higher self. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice, your own wisdom. Ask it to take a form for you. It could be a being, a light, a tree, an animal, even an equation. See what you get at this moment. Ask your higher self to touch the place in your body that is holding your divine essence at this moment. Wherever it is, just imagine that your higher self is touching that point and begin to breathe in and out through that point. So as you're creating a, a vortex, an opening. And then draw your higher self in through that opening, that point where you hold your divine essence and sit in meditation. Om. Reach up into the cosmos, and as you inhale, draw down a beautiful beam of pure white light through the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, 
and exhale that light across the planet and back into the cosmos. And breathe in, drawing it down, feeling it passing through you, and exhaling, lasering it, gifting it to the planet and back into the cosmos. And just continue that cycle and allow it to take you into a beautiful state of meditation. Oh. And this third part of our meditation again, we will balance the earth and the sky. And as you connect to these things, maybe for you, wherever you are, the conversation of too much rain or no rain is where you need to focus, or you live in the Middle East or places where there are earthquakes going on, you can focus there. Or you can feel both of them coming together, earth and sky, in a beautiful balance. So ask the earth and the sky, or either, what frequency of light they need to come into harmony with no extremes, simply the pulse of whatever is needed for earth herself. Do that now, just focus on both or either and ask what frequency of light will bring them into balance. does make a difference when we are focusing and know that, that our energies can support balance, whether it's inside ourselves or anywhere on the planet. And all we have to do is do it. Thank you. We have a second part of our meditation. It's called Knowings. And people from around the world each week send in questions that they would like us to focus on a particular topic in order to become clearer about it and to uplift ourselves and all those who are paying attention to these conversations. So Allison will tell us what questions have come today. Allison? The first, <coughs> excuse me, the first question is from Newport, Rhode Island in the USA. I have a best friend whom I grew up with. He had a lovely childhood and now has a lovely family. He has had no terrible traumatic life issue. He's a wonderful soul, but my question is about his inability to apologize. And, <laughs> and if it is some emotional or incarnational glitch. He is brutally opinionated and often offends others, and he almost never apologizes, losing friends and leaving his family to clean up his messes. I know your work is energetic, and I think this may be the only way to help him, but how do we do it? Thank you, Chris, for your insight. First of all, whenever you are with somebody who is, quote, otherwise a lovely being, but has some characteristic that's just impossible to deal with, and you are their friend, there are several ways that you can begin this. One is to use your friendship to show them that there is a result, there is a karmic back and forth with their, with their actions, cause and effect. One of the ways that I do that often is to use myself. I will say, you know, I had this experience the other day and I realized that, that I was responsible for it and so I'm practicing apologizing and it worked really well. So telling a story about yourself, a true story, uh, in which you uh, apologize will simply begin to imprint that concept within him. When people are opinionated uh, like that, uh, very often it's because they are unsure of themselves. And so it's, a, it's kind of a power struggle. They can't apologize because they might become vulnerable to the outside world. 
and we have no idea what experiences they've had as children that imprinted that that defense mechanism to sort of get there first so no one else can can touch it and then not apologize because it would make us look weak uh, but so you want to look at them and really and listen and, and realize, is it a power thing? Is it a vulnerability? Is it insecurity? And you can use those words uh, energetically. So uh, don't be afraid to, with gentleness and truth, um, show a friend something that is causing them to uh, suffer, even if they're not aware of it. The second part, of course, is the energetic aspect. And that is very simple. Now, you could use any of those words. Maybe that person uh, feels vulnerable or it's a power struggle. And so then, in your mind, doing an exercise in consciousness for them, you could ask, for example, where are you holding that need to win an argument? Uh, and then just imagine that you have been given the answer because you will get an answer, you will get a sense. Maybe it's in their heart, maybe it's in their, their emotional body, maybe it's in their karmic knees or in their head. Wherever you get is, is where you're going to focus. So don't worry about if it's right or not. It's what comes to you. And this is the gift of the exercises of consciousness that we do. We never impose our ideas about what things are. We listen and we let the person choose. So the person is saying, in your mind's eye, you're answering and saying, well, I'm holding that in my head, or I'm holding it in my stomach, or wherever. And then, just imagine that you are focusing on that part of their body, and ask that part of their body what frequency of light, what color it needs to dissolve away that stuck energy that's causing them grief, separation, the very thing they're trying to avoid by being king of the mountain that they're creating. And so we ask for color because everything is made of color. It's the strongest energy. It is the cosmic uh, force of communication. And so just by saying, what color does that place in your body need uh, to rebalance? Again, uh, the opinionation, the vulnerability, the power struggle, the defense mechanisms, whatever comes to you, or simply where are you holding that, that habit of uh, being afraid to apologize. And then whatever color they show you, and also, this is all going on within your mind. You could be talking to them on the phone or with them and doing this exercise in consciousness, and they will actually know that something's different. Uh, so whatever color you get, then you're going to reach up into the cosmos, never take it from you, and pull down exactly that color that they have asked for, down through the top of your head, and imagine that you're lasering it out right to the place in their body that's holding that. And just feel as if it continues to flow through you and into them until you feel a shift. That shift may you feel them sigh or relax or... or walk away or turn around and smile, any kind of response, and you're done. It's that fast. And uh, so doing exercises in consciousness, whereby energetically and spiritually, you're sending an energy that helps someone to let go of something or to come to a place of balance, that's a tremendous gift that you are giving. Great love. Allison? The second question is from Lindau, Germany. How can we heal our auric field after damaging it with drugs? Mm. Such a good question. With so many people using drugs today, using them because on one level, they want to see something more than the third dimension. We know it's there because we experience it as children. We all do. And then we have it put away because it's confusing. No one says yes. There are uh, uh, entities dancing in your garden. Yes, there are lights around. Uh, they don't have that confirmation, and so they push it away. We all do. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, 
that's one reason people get into drugs. And the other part of that is it's, just, it's a social thing. Uh, it makes us feel safe. And it takes us away. And here's the thing. When you use drugs, they take you into the astral streaming. And there are many, many stratifications of astral. That's why sometimes people have bad trips. Sometimes people have wonderful evolutions that can be anywhere in between there. But it is a streaming in the astral, and that streaming is holding, outside of time and space, the emotions, the energies, the, the vibrations of all experiences in the astral, which very often are contrary to our sense of humanity or safety or, or love. And so what happens then is that we pick up those energies. And, and that is very bad for us. And it causes a hole, many holes, a tearing in our auric field. It's important to know that everyone has an auric field, even a cat and a, and a, and a rock. It's an electromagnetic energy that radiates out from all life, even if that life is a rock. Um, and they have tested that scientifically. In humans, it, it's, it is the form, actually, of the emotional body. And this is why you can tell uh, when somebody's angry or dangerous or you don't like them for some reason or you can tell that they are sad because you are actually reading their auric field. Even if you're not aware of that, you are. We can all sense each other. And uh, this is an important gift to our humanity, that sixth sense, some people call it. We have 72 senses, but that sixth one is that sort of uh, tuning in to things that are not on the surface. So um, when there is an emotional experience or we're accessing the auric field or the astral energy with a streaming of all kinds of vibrations, it creates a tear. The integrity of our emotional energy connected to all of our other subtle bodies radiating out from us is disrupted. Even alcohol. Uh, people who drink a lot of alcohol often have very large auric fields, but they fall away. And that's why they take in energies from others. I can tell when someone's going to have an alcoholic problem by the time they're four or five by seeing their little child's auric field because it has to do with sensitivity. And so uh, we don't want that tear in our auric field because it will cause confusion for you. You may act out something and then say, why did I do that? I don't really feel that way because you're picking up and, and expressing some energies that are actually not yours. And so we do want to heal that. And uh, if your auric field is torn, uh, creates holes in it uh, by using certain drugs, it often can take 15 years for it to seal. It may never seal unless we have the gift of consciousness. And the way we do that is simply to take a moment, which will be interesting for you, to ask your body, show me any places in my auric field that have tears or scars or are out of balance. Uh, sometimes our auric field is held very close to us because we have so much fear. Sometimes it's going in every direction because it's full of kinetic energies that we've gotten from the astral. So first of all, in this exercise in consciousness, we're going to look and see any part of your auric field. Just accept that without defense. Oh, here's a place and I can heal it right now. And then we're going to you ask our auric field what frequency of light, what color uh, it needs to seal that, to heal uh, that scarring or that hole. And then we will draw that in and radiate it out. We always do it out through the solar plexus because this is the center of the emotional body. But when you radiate out from here, it's going out on all sides of you because your auric field is, is a hologram around you. But we focus here. And as we extend that color out, we automatically are thinking to ourselves and, and feeling that energetically we are brushing our field. We're healing it with light and extending it and making it cohesive again. Let's do it now. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath into your body. And now ask your auric field to show you any places, any spots in it that are damaged, that maybe are scarred, 
or maybe have holes. And just, just kind of sense that. Might be over to your left or your right, might be close to your body, might be far away. Just really sense any place in your auric field that is not radiating the beautiful messages that you want to give out to the world. And then ask that point in your auric field what color it needs to heal now. Take the first color, not black or gray. It could be silver or any other color, but not black or gray because they are negative energetics. Take that first color. Now reach up into the cosmos and pull down exactly that color through the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, and hold it there for a moment and feel the power of that color, making you safe, making you happy, making you powerful. And now just imagine that you are releasing it into your auric field that is going specifically into any areas where you have holes or it needs help. And as it goes into those areas, just as if you were brushing something, your hair or your teeth, feel as if you're brushing that color into those holes and into those wobbles or that, that uh, chaotic energy so that the color begins to absorb and heal any disruption. And as you brush it, it extends your auric field, makes it strong and cleans it makes it cohesive everywhere. Just give it a little brushing and then feel that it's standing out and it's strong, that the ends of your auric field are strong. And now breathe deeply and sense your own auric field. Feel how it is healing. And open your eyes. I would recommend doing that any time that you take in any kind of drugs, uh, to do that afterwards so that you don't end up with scars or holes that have been there for 15, 20 years, but that through your consciousness you can... And remember, when you're healing a hole or a tear or something, you're actually dissolving away any energy that's not yours. It might be something that's similar to a theme of yours and that's why you took it in. So you're actually healing yourself on many levels as you're doing that. Thank you so much for that question. I know it's important to, to many, many, many people. Great love. Allison? The last question is from Pemba, Mozambique. Dear Miss Griska, I am surrounded by paradise and I have everything but I am so ill-content in my soul. I think it's because I have too much. The feeling is that I miss myself. Is there a way to find myself again, the self I was before I became rich, or at least to be at peace with wealth? Oh, let us begin with being at peace with wealth. The difficulty here is that you have some psychogenetic inheritance. Uh, thought forms about wealth, that wealth separates you from others or people only love you because of your wealth, uh, etc. And you want to kind of, as we did this last exercise, where am I holding any thought forms like that? What color do they need to be released? But you know, right now, your wealth could bring you to your true self. And here's a suggestion that I would have. Think about what you care about in this world. Do you care about the earth or the nature or animals or people or the seas or whatever you care about? And then begin to place that as something you want to do in your life. So that maybe you join an organization that's focused on whatever these things you like. Maybe it's something you like to do physically. But joining other people as yourself and then, here is the great gift of being wealthy. Uh, it's called the gift that keeps on giving. Be, first of all, be grateful that you have this wonderful gift that can change the lives and change the planet. And so then you can wield it well. For example, if there's a group that you like working with, 
you could uh, anonymously give money to them. So if that gift keeps on giving, that, that strengthens uh, the organization or allows them to do things that maybe you come up with ideas for how they can uh, um, bring more to that project, make it successful and, and, and help people and life and this planet. And so never think that you should get rid of your wealth. No, use your wealth. Don't have it use you. Use your wealth. There's so many things. There's infinite amounts of ways that you could use that wealth. You could create an organization yourself that, that helps people maybe in business or in crafts or in growing things. There are a thousand ways that you could wield that money. And again, not in a way that takes it from you, but in a way that just creates that flow. Just creates the flow. And so what I want to say to you is that uh, very often, perhaps always, if you're born into wealth or you, you come up with an idea that makes you wealthy, this is called karma. And karma is simply cause and effect, action and reaction. So you are destined to have the wealth. It's not something that uh, should be a burden for you. It's a gift. And now is the moment for you to begin to use it. That'll make your life feel happy. One of the things that makes people happy is a sense of destiny, a sense of purpose. And the second thing is belonging. We need to, to belong. And so you can belong as yourself. And the more that you extend yourself into the world, the more you will feel that this is my true self. And what a gift. It is for me to be me, with all that I have, with all that I am, and with all that I give. So I want to say congratulations to you for being a template, one who can help the world get away from those ideas that, that wealth will separate you or cause you to be not spiritual or not to be yourself, but rather wealth is a threshold that you can pass that will bring us all into a world of abundance and joy, safety, and belonging. Great love to you and to each and all of us. Till next time.